doing this voice note, my voice might sound a little bit rusty because I just woke up, but I have to do it while it's uh, more or less fresh in my mind. Bless the Lord. This one, the Lord gave me four visions in two parts. The first two part vision that the Lord showed me. Uh, let me see, I have to try to see how best I can remember them. Okay, in the first two part vision, I was on earth. And it's like I was doubtful about my salvation, my position with God. And I was talking to the Lord, crying out to the Lord, and all of a sudden I was translated from earth and I was up in the clouds. And the clouds represented heaven. So suddenly, in one moment I was on the earth, and the next moment I was up in the clouds looking down on the earth. And spiritually, the, the, the clouds are some beautiful white clouds. And spiritually, the clouds represent angels. So I was surrounded by billions of angels for protection. And uh, I think the Lord did bring me back down to earth. Yes, I did come back down to earth. And when I was on the earth, uh, Two persons came to me for prayer, my brother and I think my little daughter, and I was praying for them. But on the earth as a Christian is like people took me for granted as a Christian. They didn't really believe that I was saved. And so the contrast for me is that God is saying to me, look here. They might look down on you, underestimate you, and all of that. But I showed you your true position. You are my son. You are my son. And I am with you. And you are surrounded by billions of my angels. That's the first dream. Now in the second dream, there, I went to heaven, literally went to heaven. And there was a young girl who was in heaven. She had died and left her little son and her husband. And God, I didn't see Jesus. I saw God, the heavenly father. Glory to God. And uh, this young lady, God paid special attention to her. He was moving in and amongst everybody. But he paid special attention to her. He hugged her so tightly. He was so happy to see her in heaven. And I think he paid extra special attention to her because he knew that she was sorrowful about leaving her son. And he took her and gave her a personal tour of heaven. Now, heaven was just so simple and beautiful. The most profound thing about heaven was how peaceful it was. And the next most profound thing was that one would think that the Heavenly Father was high and lifted up and a foreboding figure and all of that, though he, we would expect him to be filled with love, but no. The Heavenly Father was so, so very simple. He, he looked like a regular father, grandfather figure. And everybody was just so comfortable around him. And then I was taken back to Earth. On the Earth, I found myself in the company of a young lady whom um, I had wanted to be with. Um, some years ago, but this young lady is not a Christian, but I always admire the fact that 
you know, she was one of those girls who her name called up, called up, what a place with man and all of that. And she was, a, you know, a gentle, gentle soul and all of that. But nothing happened between us. In the dream, God showed me that she was heading to a society event. And I walked along with her. She never invited me. I was just walking along with her. And uh, this is the impression that I got in the dream about her. She was very deeply desirous of becoming a part of society. She wanted so much to rise up in the ranks in society, to be known by society. And uh, somebody gave her a VIP ticket to the event. So, because we were walking, I walked along with her. In the dream, I knew that I was a Christian. I really wasn't supposed to go to that kind of an event. But because I really liked her, and uh, I was happy to be in her company. But I knew in the dream that she didn't like me the way I liked her. I was up in the society um, echelons like she would have wanted. So she paid me no mind. She just tolerated me as an acquaintance, not even as a friend. And so when we got to the event, she was ushered up into the VIP lounge. And it's significant to know that the Lord showed me that the artist that they had to perform at that society event was Dexter Dapps. Now Dexter Dapps, um, I think everybody knows him now. He's a dancehall artist, Sing J. But his presence came with rudeness, crudeness, lewdness, debauchery. That's his lyrical content. And the women love, love him for that. So that was what the society wanted to hear. And while she was sitting in the VIP lounge, I noted that nobody paid her any mind. Nobody paid her any mind. The same society people that she loved so much, that she admired so much, that she wanted to be a part of. Somehow she got a ticket, she got there, she sat there, but nobody paid her any mind. And then at one stage, she began talking to somebody on her phone. Now, I didn't follow her into the VIP lounge because I knew that it would not have been appropriate because of the fact that she didn't invite me on in. So I just stood out there. And she paid me no mind, and the society people paid her no mind. And her phone rang, she answered it, and surprise, surprise, this nice, calm lady that I know, I realized in that moment that she had no inner peace. She was cussing on the phone and miserable and all of that. The young girl in heaven, she was at peace in heaven with the Lord. But the contrast this young lady had no peace because I know her to be a quiet person, a very nice person, but that was just a facade. Deep inside, she had no peace. She became miserable. Why? Because the impression I got in the dream was that all her life, she had sought desperately to, to become a part of the elite, but the elite were only using her. They had no true care for her. They didn't have any love for her. And so they ignored her. And so eventually she became bitter inside and angry. So that was a contrast. I sent her a message this morning encouraging her to give her life to the Lord. So that was um, the second dream with a two part, with me being in heaven and seeing me on earth with this young lady was after the things of this life. The first one was me being on the earth, translated up into clouds, nearer to heaven where I could see the angels surrounding me and all of that. And the difference between, you know, how they treat me on the earth 
just as how the, the high society treated that girl badly, the regular people on the earth, even my own brethren, treat me badly as well because they didn't believe that I'm a Christian. They didn't believe that I'm saved. They didn't believe that I'm a part of the family of God. But in heaven, God recognized me. In heaven, God acknowledged me. In heaven, God acknowledged this humble young girl who died in the Lord. On earth, society didn't recognize this girl who was going after society. So my encouragement to everybody is, hey, listen, don't be worried about the things of this life. Don't be worried about uh, what man thinks about you. Be more concerned with having a relationship with God and to be known and recognized in heaven. Because at the end of the day, that's what counts. The word of God says the end of a matter is better than the beginning of it. It is written that we, the believers, are like the off score of the earth. Many of us have no place to live. We're like, we wander around like vagabonds in the earth. Even Jesus Christ, the Son of God, at one stage, he had no home, nowhere to live. Somebody wanted to follow him. He said, I have no place to lay my head. The Christian walk is not an easy walk. It's not a cakewalk. Jesus promised us that we would suffer a lot. So that when we come and we begin to suffer, we do not think that it's because he has abandoned us, but it's part of the Christian walk DNA because we live in a fallen world, a world that hates righteousness, hates God and all that he stands for. And so they will persecute you. But one thing God promised us is that if we keep our minds on him, he will keep us in perfect peace. So we will not begin to experience peace only when we get to heaven, but we can enjoy it right here on the earth. He will give us a peace that passes all understanding. So that once we, when, while we go through our suffering, and people see us smiling and laughing and we are relaxed, they wonder why is it that they are so relaxed? Why is it that they are not exhibiting signs and symptoms of the pain that we are inflicting on them? And yet, on the flip side, they themselves out there in the world, they put up a facade like they're happy and they're good and everything is okay, but see them behind the scenes, they are miserable. It's all a facade. So, Jesus is the best relationship that we could run after. God bless you.